All right. Quick review. He's back in the saddle here. So force is a push or pull. Causes acceleration if unbalanced. Six different types of forces. Force of gravity, friction, air resistance. Normal force is from a surface, a supportive surface perpendicular to that surface tension and applied force. Okay. So free body diagram illustrates all the forces acting on it, not velocity, acceleration, or anything like that. Start drawn from the center. Um, the things we're going to hit today are these. Oh, you can't see that. Are these two. Uh, only draw forces that are acting on the object, not forces that the object is exerting on other things. Um, and also only forces that are caused by things that are in contact with the object, except for gravity. Um, so this, free, this one we learned that inertia is not a force. And this one we learned that gravity acts straight down, normal force acts perpendicular to the surface, and friction opposes the way it wants to slip or slide if we put it on ice, which way it would it slip down the ramp, so friction goes up the ramp parallel to the surface. So, draw the free body diagram of a person leaning up against a tree, kind of like a wall set. What would that look like? Give that a shot. All right, start calling out some forces. Gravity going down. What else? Okay, normal force going up. From the ground. Other forces. Friction going which way? So if you were on ice, which way would your feet slip? Show me. Feet would slip this way. So friction goes, opposes that. Does that make sense? Your feet would go whoop. Okay, so friction opposes that. Any other forces? Okay. So, <clears throat> does that make sense? Like the tree is supporting the person. Okay. So there's a, a normal force from the tree acting perpendicular to the tree. So, first thing I, this one points out is you can have uh, two of the same type of force. That's not illegal. Like, that's perfectly fine. I have two surfaces I've got from the ground. So, I'm going to specify from the ground and from the tree. Get to that. Okay. Have you ever done a wall sit before? Over time, what starts happening to your body besides getting tired? 
and shaking. Yeah, you start sliding down. So, friction opposes slipping or sliding. So, friction on your back is going to be acting which way? Up. Okay. So, here you have friction from the ground. And this would be friction from the tree. You can't really see that. I'm going to write that better. Friction from the tree. Get rid of that. So what this shows us is you can have more than one force going in the same direction. That's not illegal. Get rid of that. Here's a free body diagram. Someone doing a wall set. Okay. All right. Free body diagram of the rock being pulled. Gravity, what other forces are going on? Okay. So, so there's a force going this way at that angle. Okay. First question I've got for you is, is that tension or is that applied force? Okay, so the follow-up question to help answer that is what object is in physical contact with the rock? You or the rope? The rope. So because it's the rope and not you, we're going to call that tension rather than applied force. Even though the person is the one kind of responsible for that whole thing that at the beginning, the rope is actually what's touching the certain force on the rock. So we're going to call that tension rather than applied force. If you are pushing on the rock, we'd call it applied force or grabbing hold of the rock and pulling it. Okay, other forces. Friction going which way? Okay, and normal force. How do we do? All right. Okay, Carter. Great question. Okay, so the question was. When we were leaning against the tree, was there a applied force? So this gets at this statement here. 
we're only drawing the forces acting on the object, not what the forces that the object is doing to other things. So yeah, the there's an applied force from the person on the tree, but I don't care what the person is doing. I care what the world is doing to the person. Okay. So here's our free body diagram. Follow up to this is draw the free body diagram of the person. as they're pulling on the rock. Okay, so we've got gravity and normal force. If you were standing on ice, what would happen? Specifically to your feet. Which way would your feet slip? Your feet would slip to the right. So friction says nope. Get rid of that. Okay. Now, is there a force going this way or this way on the person? A or B? help answer that question, we're using this factoid here. Only draw forces that are acting on the object, not forces that the object is exerting on other things. So this force, is it going A or B, acting on the person? So if I oh you can't see this if I am pulling on this rope. What Okay, so are we good with tension? Okay, which way is tension acting on me? If this rope just got cut, what would happen to me? I'd fall this way. So which way is the force of tension acting on me? This way. I am pulling, yes. But I don't care what I'm doing to the rope. What I care about is what the rope is doing to me. I am the victim. I am like, what is the world? What is the surroundings? What is all the other objects doing to me? What's the environment doing to me? Like, oh, being pulled this way. 
Okay, yes, I'm doing the pulling, but I don't care what I'm doing. I don't care what the object is doing to the environment. I care about what the environment is doing to, to the object. All right with that. So there's a force of tension going this way. Get to that. Okay. Notice it's in the opposite direction of this force of tension. Good there. Okay. How are we doing? Good. All right. Give this one a shot. So, force, gravity, normal force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm going to lead you to this one because it's, <clears throat> it's not screaming obvious. If I, if there is a sheet of ice on this flatbed truck. What would happen? To the crate. As you're envisioning this, Let's pretend this is the crate of flowers. This is the pickup truck bed. Okay. What is the state of motion of the crate of flowers right now? Stationary at rest. So, what does the inertia want to do? Stay at rest. Watch what this does relative to me in the background. See how that works? Okay. So it wants to stay at rest. Okay. So what force is enabling it to stay with? If it stays on the bed of the pickup truck, what force is enabling it to stay with the pickup truck? Friction. And which way is friction acting? Point. Friction prevents the slipping and sliding. If you're in the pickup truck, it looks like it slides backwards. 
Okay, but to someone on the side of the road, it looks like it just stays at rest. But there's slipping and sliding going on between those surfaces. So friction says, nope, I oppose that. And that's your free body diagram. Okay, here's what I want to bring up with this example. A lot of people think, oh, friction always goes in the opposite direction of motion. No. Friction always goes in the opposite direction. The surfaces want to slip or slide. What enables the crate of flowers to speed up is friction. Going in the same direction as motion. Cool with that? Okay. So, your homework tonight, we're not, or don't wrap up, we're not done. Uh, homework tonight is to draw free body diagrams of multiple situations. Like I give you scenarios and you're like free body diagram, okay? Um, this is going to be a two day worksheet. First day is just the free body diagrams, okay? Second day is setting that up. Don't do that. We're going to start that lesson today, but don't do that part. All you're doing for the worksheet is drawing your free body diagrams. Okay. <laughs> All right. Tell your neighbor what Newton's first law of motion says. Okay. Object rest, stay at rest, object motion will continue moving at a constant speed of straight line path. So, how will an object, a moving object, move with no unbalanced forces acting on it? It will stay moving at a constant velocity. Okay. So, what happens if there is an unbalanced force acting on it? Tell your neighbor. Hopefully you said to some degree it will experience acceleration. Speed up, slow down, change direction, something. You okay with that? Let's experience acceleration. All right. So if I say balance, I, I'm, I'm using this phrase balance and unbalanced forces. I just want to kind of find that. Balance forces means... Um, uh, all the forces cancel each other out, or the resultant force is equal to zero. So when I say balanced forces, all the forces, when added up together, cancel each other out. They're going in opposite directions. The resultant force is zero. It means balanced forces. So unbalanced would just mean they don't equal zero. They don't cancel each other out. There's some total force Still acting on it. Good to that.
Okay, inertia. Tell your neighbor what inertia is. And what does it want to do if the object's at rest? And what does it want to do if the object is moving? Okay. Once it, if an object's at rest, it wants to stay at rest. So the object's moving, it wants to continue moving however it's moving at constant speed in a straight line path. All right. How much in, inertia does an object have is solely dependent upon an object's mass. Solely de determined by the object's mass. Okay. Um, the more mass you have, the more inertia you have. The unit, sorry, the variable, the variable for mass is a lowercase m. The unit, we measure in physics, we measure that in kilograms. In chemistry, you measured mass in grams. In physics, we measure that in kilograms. In there. Okay. This variable force we are talking about is capital F. The unit of force is a Newton, as in Sir Isaac Newton. The abbreviation for that is a capital N. Okay. Um, so in America, we measure our force in pounds. In science, we measure force in newtons. All right, Newton's second law. So we talked about Newton's first law, Newton's second law of motion. This is actually an equation. And this is that equation there. Have you seen, I need to probably draw that better. Have you seen that symbol before? Uh, sigma. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. You seen that? What does this mean? Sum of. That just means you're adding things together. So some of the what? Forces, yep. Okay, it's equal to mass times acceleration. If you ask anybody who's taken physics, hey, what's the most popular, most used equation in introductory physics? They're gonna say F equals MA. You use this a lot. Okay, so. Describing this in your own words, here we go. So if I divide by mass, this helps us to describe this more conceptually. So I have the sum of the forces over mass is equal to acceleration. Okay. The total force, this wants motion to change. It wants the motion to change. It wants it to like speed up, slow down, do something different. Let's change things up. Let's do something different. That's, that's what the force wants to do. 
but mass determines inertia. And what does inertia want to do to the motion? Tell your neighbor. Okay, it wants motion to uh, remain the same. So do you see, it wants the motion to stay the same. So do you see the conflict of interest? Do you see the battle between force versus inertia? Like, do something different. And they're just like, come on, man. Let's just maintain status quo. Quit rocking the boat. Just do what we're doing. Go to that. So there's a battle. The result of the battle is acceleration. Um, this is how quickly motion changes or the rate at which motion changes, the rate at which velocity is changing, how quickly the motion changes, okay? So you can't determine the acceleration of an object solely based upon how much force is exerting. Let's pretend you were kicking a soccer ball and then you turned and you kicked a medicine ball. You guys know what those are? Is that what you call them? Medicine balls? Yeah. Okay. Bowling ball, if you're like, I don't know what a medicine ball is, okay? You're going to you know, apply the same amount of force, but the acceleration of that ball is going to look completely different because the masses are different. The medicine ball is going to have more inertia and therefore you're going to kind of cause acceleration to be less. Get to that. Okay. Um, net force. Have you heard? Okay. In economics, have you heard of like uh, the net gain? Uh, like you've got your gross amount of stuff, like you, you sell a product and you get income coming in, okay? But you also have to pay for the supplies and any, anything that you, okay? So you've got your income, like stuff coming in, and then you have stuff you got to pay. After that's all said and done, that's your net profit. Okay, so the net forces after it's all said and done, it's the sum of the forces. It's the total force. Um, it's the resultant force. All those things are the same. Okay, so how would you how would you put this into words? How would you say that? Just like, how would you decipher that? Uh, that that's a application to that, but how would you just straight up say this? Yep, the sum of the forces are equal to zero. The net force is equal to zero. The resultant force is equal to zero. The total force is equal to zero. All those. Get to that. Okay. Last thing. We'll stop here. So looking at the unit where Newtons comes from. So force has units of Newtons. This comes from, what's the unit for mass? K. 
kilograms. And what's the unit for acceleration? Meters per second squared. So one Newton is equal to one kilogram times one meter per second squared. That's where that is coming from. It's kind of like mixing colors, primary colors, you get different colors, secondary colors, primary colors, kilograms, meters, and seconds. And we kind of mix those together and get a different unit called Newtons. Conceptually, if you have one Newton of force applied to one kilogram, that object will experience an acceleration of one meters per second squared. And we will continue this tomorrow. Get a worksheet due tomorrow.